Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Paweł Wieczorek. I work with Collabora. And I've been involved in uh, testing automation uh, efforts since around 2016, uh, maintaining various parts of uh, automated testing laboratories, ranging from devices under test uh, maintenance, as well as their supporting hardware, through server-side components profiling and development, uh, up to uh, co-architecting custom solutions in this domain. Uh, today, I would like to share with you uh, some of the experiences I had with uh, various, uh, various uh, software solutions uh, and some of the encounters, or let's face it, uh, straight up mistakes made along the way. Uh, I would also like to share with you how you could make use uh, of these lessons learned uh, in your laboratories uh, and your workflows. Uh, as well as maybe having a better start uh, in some of the topics uh, in the domain of uh, automated testing labs you might have not uh, given a try before. Uh, I will start with a short introduction to why uh, this talk uh, uh, was created. Next, I will move to describing all the candidates that I uh, chose uh, for comparison. Mm, after that, I will also elaborate a bit on the use cases uh, I uh, tried to cover. And then uh, I will give you a short summary of uh, my experience with all those various software solutions. Uh, finally, I would like to share with you uh, what might uh, come next, uh, what would be my recommendation, what might uh, come uh, next, and also some uh, final thoughts before we move to Q&A session. For now, let's start with motivation for this talk. Why, uh, why we're all here? Uh, and let me take you a few years back uh, to the uh, ELCE 2017 in Prague, uh, where uh, the topic of comparing strengths of various solutions uh, got a bit more attention during Birds of the Feather session uh, called Farming Together, uh, uh, led by Andrew Murray. It was, uh, for me, uh, one of the first times when I started looking outside my bubble of uh, automated testing laboratories. But, uh, or, or maybe before we go there, uh, if you haven't uh, seen uh, this session, I s uh, encourage you to review uh, the recording uh, from the link down below. However, it wasn't the first or the only effort aimed uh, at working towards uh, experience sharing uh, in this community. Uh, there were others, like uh, two automated testing summits, uh, that were held in 2018 and 2019, with the 2019 uh, not only covering uh, status updates for various test lab stacks, as well as survey conducted by Tim Bird, uh, the 2019 event uh, also uh, had multiple talks on various tracks ranging from board and lab management uh, through covering test definitions up to most common QA systems and their issues. It also uh, sparked many follow-up uh, actions, like for example, auto, uh, open automated testing uh, standards uh, call, which is held every month and provides a forum for discussing uh, various topics. Uh, or the workflows mailing list, just to name a few of those follow-up actions. What I believe is that these efforts have shaped the uh, testing automation community uh, to what testing automation community is today and actually still play an important role in developing new solutions, improving existing ones, and onboarding new engineers to the topic of automated tests. During the previous uh, e embedded open source summit in Prague, I had the chance to uh, discuss uh, the topics uh, that were raised in 2017 with Andrew. 
Uh, and we were wondering whether the questions uh, he asked back in 2017 and the discussions that followed uh, need revisiting, and if so, uh, what would be the best way to do it? And let me be crystal clear with you. I cannot express how much I appreciate uh, continuous work and support uh, from members of this community uh, and uh, all, the, um, all the help you uh, show on a on daily basis. Uh, sharing all those insta uh, insights of what you develop, what you use, what you continue on uh, improving is invaluable. And uh, I realize that many of you have gone uh, great lengths to help others to uh, try different solutions out. And that is actually exactly what I intend to encourage you to do today. Uh, if you're at the start of your journey, I would like to provide you with some hints on what uh, the available solutions for you are uh, and how well they can fit in your requirements. If you already maintain a test lab uh, or some of its components, I would like to encourage you to take a look at your solution, then check out how it compares to other solutions uh, and maybe think of the ways how both of them uh, could uh, benefit from each other. And uh, these actions were actually what I've been up to uh, for the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I made a few assumptions. I wanted to just start small, maybe with a virtual device uh, only, and uh, to make things a bit more challenging, I also uh, decided that I would like to um, work with either no or as little as possible of external support. Uh, what I meant by that uh, was that I wanted to find out how easy it is to, to access and use uh, the documentation already available when starting from scratch or uh, without much experience in a new uh, testing laboratory. I hope that by the end of uh, today's talk, uh, you will have some ideas how to approach uh, such a challenge yourself, and you will feel encouraged to do so. Um, but please don't make uh, a mistake uh, that I did of uh, trying to tackle this uh, challenge alone, but we'll get to this in just a second. Uh, first, let me introduce you to the champions we'll be taking a closer look at today. And uh, I would like to make a quick note that I chose uh, those only as an example of various paradigms uh, you can go with when creating or maintaining your own setup. Uh, if you see an important one missing, I will be more than happy to learn about it, and uh, we can discuss those uh, as well, either during Q&A or we can take it offline. Also, I realize that some of them uh, support uh, multi-paradigm, and uh, certain functionalities can be achieved in various ways. I'm not questioning this at all, I will be just highlighting what I really enjoyed uh, about uh, all those solutions the most. And first uh, candidate is Lava, which in just uh, uh, maybe oversimplification, but uh, it's a mainly set of Django apps uh, that connect to a Postgres database. Uh, so obviously that's a Python-based solution. Uh, it uh, also provides an existing library of uh, YAML test definitions and is well equipped with uh, dashboard, uh, results querying helpers, and various uh, other tools. Its performance in, is continuously profiled uh, and uh, pushed, and uh, by that I mean that uh, the performance limits of these solutions uh, are continuously pushed uh, forward and it supports uh, quite large uh, workloads. You can even say that it's uh, cloud deployment uh, ready, as well as it's well integrated with uh, various external uh, tools uh, like uh, Prometheus for monitoring its uh, ongoing uh, 
its ongoing work, or uh, GitLab for submitting um, submitting tests to be executed in Lava. The next uh, candidate is LabGrid, which is also a Python-based solution, uh, which introduced a place term, which is not only device under test that you would uh, use uh, in your testing, but also accompanying uh, support equipment. It already uh, provides supports for large set uh, of such hardware, um, and also provides an integration uh, for uh, PyTest, for writing test scenarios. Uh, interactive use is actually a first-class citizen uh, for uh, this solution. Uh, and uh, what's also important and interesting is that there is a set of uh, tutorials on how to get started with LabGrids uh, available as a playlist on uh, YouTube channel of the creators of this tool. Uh, next one I uh, had a chance to uh, play with uh, is BoardSwarm, which is a relatively new solution and uh, in uh, and uh, other uh, than uh, the previous ones, this one is based on the uh, Rust tooling. It also provides an interactive uh, access uh, to your boards. Uh, but it is focused on providing uh, hardware abstractions to unify how you can access your devices. Uh, for example, uh, from storage point of view or uh, serial uh, console that you would like to access. So the test definitions might not necessarily be useful in this context. Instead, uh, it is meant to be a building block for more complex solutions, uh, or maybe just a unified base layer replacement for existing ones. Uh, it also follows the Unix uh, philosophy and Unix principle of doing one thing, but doing it well. I also wanted to take a look at, uh, more at a solution that is aimed at more uh, enterprise-y, uh, let's call it that way, uh, environments. Uh, and for that, I chose Beaker, uh, which again is uh, a Python uh, tool. It's not necessarily meant for embedded environments, but a similar set of functionality and requirements uh, on its side are also present. So uh, power state toggle, um, some additional supporting uh, hardware, um, and so on. This uh, is also a fully fledged uh, solution with uh, various dashboards and UIs available, but there is no obligation whatsoever to use all of those components uh, if that's not your thing. Uh, you can still benefit uh, from its uh, subsystems, like, for example, Cobbler, just for having a bare metal provisioning layer if that is your requirement. I also gave a try uh, to uh, custom hardware-assisted uh, solutions, and I realized there are various solutions available for that, uh, ranging from uh, USB maxes, uh, microSD card maxes, uh, to um, more complete solutions. And uh, one of those, uh, which is uh, testing in a box by code thing, was the one that I chose to uh, give a try. Uh, I could try to uh, also uh, specify what language it actually uh, uses for its supporting software, uh, but uh, that's not the feature I would like to highlight here. Uh, what, uh, what is actually really interesting is that uh, the designs for this custom hardware and its uh, software integration layer uh, although tailored to specific system requirements, were uh, kept generic enough and modular enough that they sh should be that you should be able uh, to uh, reuse those tools in your setups as well. 
But before uh, we even think of trying to do so, uh, let's uh, make an important note that it's much harder, obviously, to do iterations uh, using someone else's solution unless it ticks all the boxes for you. Uh, there will also be uh, some, invested, uh, some investment needed uh, in both uh, costs, labor, uh, know-how, uh, before you could uh, even try to incorporate those in your setup, but it probably can bring uh, nice returns in long run. Also, this is one exception uh, to the rule I made uh, that I would like to uh, try all those solutions in virtual environment, because it's simply not applicable uh, to, uh, to such an approach. Uh, another uh, remark I would like to make is that I did not manage to get my hands on uh, testing in a box uh, hardware, so I made use of what I have, what I had available, uh, which is uh, a simple micro SD, uh, D multiplexer, and uh, custom uh, PDU. Uh, to sum it up, uh, we've got the five contestants uh, that uh, started. In, uh, at various points in time. As you can see, most of them are uh, Python-based, but not all of them. And the uh, test definitions or task definitions uh, are uh, described in uh, various ways. I would also like to uh, make another reminder that I do realize uh, that, uh, for example, Lava provides uh, hacking sessions or multi-node uh, tests. Uh, and also LabGrid works with uh, custom hardware uh, for assisting its uh, test runs. Uh, but I chose those uh, candidates as the uh, just representation of the use cases we will be covering. And now let's move to uh, those use cases. Uh, the first one, uh, which I believe many of you might be interested uh, and uh, is interactive access to your devices under tests. Most often it's just to get an access to device that is uh, not available in your physical location, but instead it's somewhere in a server room uh, on the other side of the globe possibly, or just downstairs for cooling purposes. Uh, if more than one user uh, wants to access uh, such, uh, such a device, uh, it's also important to remember uh, that uh, there will be a need for some reservation mechanism. Uh, um, for example, uh, to time out sessions or just um, kick uh, users that no longer make use of a uh, device they reserved. Uh, also, just uh, access to serial console is a good start, but for embedded purposes, uh, some additional control would really be useful. For example, to uh, GPIOs, to uh, massive storage, or to additional uh, measurement equipment like uh, ACME boards. Uh, next use case uh, I covered uh, was batch processing of submissions. And I just uh, tried to throw a bunch of uh, test submissions and see uh, how well it would be handled uh, by um, scheduler that, uh, um, that was either built in or external to, a solutions, uh, to those solutions. Uh, of course, some of the candidates I showed you earlier are, do not uh, have a built in uh, scheduler. Uh, but instead only provide a reservation mechanism. Uh, and uh, for those, uh, I cannot uh, recommend you uh, with uh, how well this uh, scheduler works because it's just an external tool. Uh, other than that, it would be very useful to have some notification mechanism or preferably even a, a callback one. And uh, this is probably mostly used as uh, um, acceptance tests on wide range of uh, device types. When a single result does not really matter uh, before uh, the whole test suite is completed uh, up to the last uh, device you would like to check. 
Uh, next, I will also wanted to cover uh, version control systems because while many embedded projects uh, and developers work uh, using complex dependency structures, uh, some of the uh, projects use just a single repository and actually need a per patch verification. In such cases, it might be a deal breaker if the test lab system uh, integrates with your VCS or not. Uh, otherwise, it will also only bring unnecessary overhead uh, to the uh, projects you develop. I uh, also realized that all those features won't, you, won't get you anywhere uh, if a new user gets stuck at first try. Uh, and uh, I was also curious whether uh, some of these solutions already uh, come with uh, some evaluation environments to get started quickly and try out the basic features. Some of them, in fact, uh, come with extensive documentation, uh, some, like I mentioned, uh, with uh, tutorial videos, uh, but uh, these, and I guess you'd agree with me, work best if they do not overwhelm a user at first glance. Uh, it also might be a bit hard uh, to find the right pace uh, for the user to learn a new uh, tool, uh, and uh, from the developer point of view, and I mean developer of such a solution, it might be hard to provide uh, such a documentation, but I believe it uh, brings many benefits in the long run. Uh, for example, by creating uh, scenarios for basic use cases, uh, if you automate them, you already have a verification environment for your test lab solution. So just to recap quickly, uh, the aspects that I analyzed was uh, interactive access, batch processing, uh, version control systems and integration with them, uh, as well as documentation and uh, first steps that you would take with uh, such a solution. Now let me share uh, some of the experiences I had with uh, those uh, test lab software. For interactive access, uh, LabGrid and BoardSwarm performed really well uh, for me. I enjoyed using both of these solutions. Uh, and although LabGrid provided much more feature-rich experience, uh, BoardSwarm allowed me to uh, keep uh, things simple. I realize I still uh, have to evaluate, uh, for example, new uh, approach to hacking session uh, in uh, Lava, which now is uh, teammate based, but that's uh, still to be uh, evaluated. Uh, also, LabGrid ticks all the boxes I mentioned uh, earlier uh, when I described what I would like uh, a solution that provides interactive access uh, to be equipped with. As for the batch uh, processing, Lava was the solution that uh, ticked all the boxes for me. So it, provides, it provided me with a scheduler, with right priorities, with callback mechanism, and even uh, queue cleanup uh, in case uh, the test submissions that I made uh, were waiting in a queue so long that they became no longer relevant. And I know that it might seem like a recurring theme uh, that uh, those solutions tick all the boxes for me, but uh, I, I think you would agree with me that these are uh, very mature uh, test lab uh, software, uh, and uh, that is why uh, they, they work so well in those use cases. As for the solutions that do not come uh, with uh, um, internal uh, scheduler, I had to uh, pick one uh, from uh, the version control system that I uh, tried to use with a given example. And that's probably the best way to work with uh, such uh, a solution for yourself. Just pick the one that you would use uh, as your version control system. And speaking of version control system, uh, when, uh, when we mm, discuss the interactive, uh, mainly interactive uh, use for the solutions, 
the uh, pipeline provided by your version control system uh, are quite a good candidate for a scheduler together with a reservation system in uh, LabGrid or BoardSwarm. Uh, for Lava, the integration with the VCS uh, could be made just by submitting jobs and either uh, poll for the results or use the uh, previously mentioned notification mechanism uh, or even use a custom runner uh, integrated with uh, VCS. Uh, you might have noticed that uh, some of the text on the slide is slightly different color. Uh, I linked all the relevant uh, additional software uh, and uh, uh, if you'd like to uh, know more about these solutions, uh, go ahead to uh, slides on uh, the schedule uh, and uh, try those links out. As for the uh, tools that were uh, built around uh, version control system, like for example, uh, testing in a box, uh, the key benefit for me was uh, having the whole config uh, of uh, such a solution kept uh, in a single place. Uh, so that I did not have to uh, actually care uh, where do I get test definitions from, uh, how is my uh, laboratory configured, and so on. On the documentation front, I have to admit that the uh, Beaker documentation was the most extensive one I came across, uh, ranging from setup documentation through administration one up to user guides. Uh, not far behind uh, was uh, Lava, document, uh, Lava documentation with both uh, classic one and the new one uh, hosted on read the docs. And I think I already mentioned it once or twice that I uh, really enjoyed the tutorials provided by LabGrid development team. Uh, going to uh, examples that you could uh, reuse as a basis uh, for your own setup, uh, the testing in a box uh, initiative provides examples in most of their sub-repositories, uh, while LabGrid just uh, holds an example subdirectory in the main repository, which is also fully equipped. Uh, and uh, Lava already provides a library of various test definitions that you could simply reuse. Many of those solutions also came with uh, ready-to-reuse evaluation environments, uh, Beaker with a uh, set of uh, Ansible uh, uh, playbooks to just provision uh, some uh, virtual machine or um, possibly uh, other system that you would like to try it on. Um, as for the lab grid, uh, my colleague uh, Chris Obart uh, created uh, also a set of uh, Ansible playbooks to try uh, lab grid in your uh, own setup, and uh, you could uh, check out his uh, talk uh, from uh, Embedded Linux conference uh, two years back, uh, linked on the slides. Uh, as for the Lava, you've got multiple choices, uh, ranging from just a simple Docker Compose, which sets up uh, a server for you uh, to try things out, uh, up to more device-centric approach, uh, with uh, Lava Docker that generates actually uh, a, a configuration for Lava based on the description of your uh, testing environment. And uh, I, what stood out the most for me uh, from all those uh, solutions was that some of the uh, testing automation uh, software uh, makes sure that all the design decisions are well documented, like for example, LabGrid and BoardSwarm. Uh, I was also really impressed uh, by the amount and specific specificity of the documentation provided by projects uh, like Beaker and Lava. Uh, and uh, what I liked about uh, testing in a box is that uh, the hardware designs that were created uh, for uh, the specific use case uh, could possibly be reused uh, and recreated in any other testing laboratory. Now let's move on to uh, what I would like to uh, recommend to you, 
And I realized that some of them might uh, sound a bit trivial, uh, maybe even uh, truism, uh, like, like a truism. But uh, I guess you'd agree with me that mm, there is never a silver bullet uh, in any of these approaches. And if you ever find uh, a solution that is ticking all of the boxes for your requirements, then uh, you could be called an extremely lucky. Also, uh, each of the testing champions I, I showed you uh, might require some adjustments for your specific needs, uh, and that comes with uh, some integration effort uh, as well. So it's uh, really important to uh, decide on what your key requirements are so that uh, it's not just a guess what, would, uh, what could work best for you, but uh, it's a choice. Uh, it's important not to overinvest uh, in uh, a solution that could become a, a dead end for your use cases. Uh, also, uh, if it is a, a choice, there will probably be a fewer integration bumps uh, for the adjustment of the whole setup to your needs. Uh, and uh, that would also help you to set your expectations right. Uh, so that no one uh, ends up disappointed with a new solution. What probably uh, could work best uh, is a hybrid approach. Uh, so, for example, uh, getting to work at BoardSwarm and using it as a base layer replacement for some existing uh, testing automation solution that could make use of uh, hardware abstractions or, for example, using LabGrid with its dedicated uh, hardware solution, uh, as well as uh, providing some additional integration to, to an existing test lab, like uh, the GitLab runner I mentioned earlier, uh, or, for example, exporter of uh, various metrics to your Prometheus database. But the most important recommendation I would like to uh, give to you is to not make the same mistake uh, I did on trying to uh, work everything out on my own. Uh, the best decision I made was, uh, by, uh, was to approach uh, a user that already had some experience uh, with uh, one of those solutions, uh, one of those solutions, when I really uh, got stuck and almost gave up on uh, trying to to make it work, uh, because it reduced, uh, it could have reduced greatly the time that I spent on trying it out uh, for myself, but also from a, a viewpoint of a developer of such a solution, it could provide a really important feedback on uh, what works well, what could be further improved, uh, and uh, what use cases are uh, actually covered by a given solution. As for the next steps, uh, I still need to upstream a few changes in my uh, evaluation environments, but only if they are actually applicable according to uh, core developers. Maybe I made some mistakes, um, probably that's uh, the, uh, the, the reason for that uh, is that I uh, tried to do uh, it without uh, communicating first. Uh, but uh, those virtual only quick starts probably could be beneficial uh, for reusing if you uh, consider uh, trying out a new software solution. Uh, also, maybe it would be useful uh, to uh, create a set of requirements for such a virtual-only uh, quick start uh, environment, uh, but that's actually for you to decide, and that's what I would love to hear from you. Uh, do you think that it would be beneficial? Would you like to use it? Uh, and uh, if there is actually a need for that? Related to it, uh, I also uh, w wanted to uh, provide you with uh, some uh, setup that is not only bound to virtual hardware, but uh, actually can be reused 
with the physical one. There were some previous discussions on choosing uh, the, the right candidate for that, but that's uh, also a slightly more complex solution to provide. Um, and uh, again, what I would love to hear from you is whether, this actu whether there actually is a need uh, for uh, such an environment or it would never be used by anyone. Uh, the last thing I uh, had in mind is uh, to try to scale up all of those solutions. I know there are certain efforts in some of them uh, to uh, keep it testing and uh, check how it behaves with uh, higher and higher workloads. And if you'd like to uh, get uh, more details on this topic, I linked uh, three different uh, talks covering it uh, for you uh, to review the recording. Uh, to sum it up, uh, I uh, wanted to show you that there are uh, many various solutions to choose from if you'd like to uh, check something out and maybe even migrate to, to a new one. Uh, I realize this might be a high investment, uh, but uh, I hope that uh, some of the features that I highlighted uh, got your interest and uh, maybe even encourage you to take up uh, the challenge. And again, uh, I would like to uh, make another remark that uh, the biggest lessons, uh, the biggest lesson I learned is to try to engage with core developers and the community around the given solution right away so that you don't get burned out, you don't uh, uh, get stuck on possibly uh, simple mm, issues uh, and you also provide uh, a feedback to those developers. And uh, that's all that I've got for you today. Uh, if you've got any questions, I will be happy to, to answer them. So you mentioned um, a lot of upfront work to, to get everything working and, and that it is difficult. Uh, how much time does it take to, or how many people does it take to administer these types of uh, projects, like a, a Lava instance? Or So I guess uh, that's uh, hard for me to estimate. And that's uh, because I um, did this experiment that I didn't want to uh, engage with anyone and to try it only on my own. I believe that uh, if you uh, get some maybe mentoring or just uh, uh, some hints uh, from core developers, that time uh, to get uh, your new system ready would be greatly uh, reduced. Uh, but for me, that was just a fun experiment. It was about uh, two hours per week uh, for uh, a few weeks, uh, and uh, that's what I ended up with. Thank you. Thanks for your talk. Uh, do you have any experience with some kind of peer-to-peer uh, -peer testing? You know, often you have some kind of a device on the other side, you want to test some interface, and you might need to configure sites on uh, things on both sides. Any comments on this? So uh, let me rephrase so that I make sure uh, that uh, I got you right. Sure. You would like to perform a test that involves multiple devices under test that communicate one with another. Right, so uh, first solution that comes to my mind is uh, a multi-node test uh, on, uh, in Lava, but I don't have much experience with that. I uh, mostly used uh, Lava for just a single device under test. Uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, although we would have to try it out, we can do that in just a minute, uh, a place in LabGrid terms could also uh, provide you with multiple devices under test that would be uh, reserved for your test run uh, and uh, possibly communicate with each other. Uh, 
And that would be the, the two solutions that I would uh, try out first. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's another solution that Intel had when they were doing their Android testing, and it's called TCF, te stands for Test Case Framework. That one also has a lot of similarity to LabGrid, and it also had the ability to set up like a virtual network as part of your test framework and everything, and that allowed you to do multiple devices and talk to each other. Um, for a while it was in Python 2, and then it finally got upgraded to Python 3. So it's on GitHub uh, slash Intel slash TCF. So that one's quite similar to LabGrid, though. Uh, thanks for your comment. I will definitely uh, have a closer look at it. Uh, if there are no more questions, uh, thanks for your attention, uh, and have a good one.